Diamond Dish with D. That's me. Thank you for coming to this video, making yourself a priority. I am Denise. It is Monday, and Monday on this channel is Cue the Horns, Doo -doo -doo -doo. Weight Watchers Weekly Weigh-In, and the Weight Watchers Weekly Meeting Technique that they talk about at the meetings. They talk about online. It's what their meeting is based around. So I bring it to you because I know a lot of you don't like Zoom, can't attend workshops because you don't have any. So Denise is a lifetime member. I do attend meetings again. I started about three weeks ago and I attend a weekly workshop that because it moved closer to my house because they were in a church that was really 45 minutes. So they're only 20 minutes. So I get to go back and I'm super excited about it. And I do feel for people that can't because I, I know how excited I am and how lucky I am and how much I get out of my meeting and how, like I said, I get it. I do. And I try to bring that kind of excitement to you here, you know, on the lives and with the meeting topic. I do what I can because I know, I know. Been there, done that, doing it. So I get it. So, all right. I was like, what's the meeting topic? But let's go for you. How was your way in D? How did you do? How was your week? My week was okay. It wasn't stellar. It was okay. I had a lot of bread, a lot of gluten bread. Uh, I do have a gluten sensitivity. It doesn't make me physically sick. It just makes me bloated. And I was, um, I know this and I still eat it. <sighs> no. When we were at a baby shower, or I should say sprinkle last week, and it was at an Italian restaurant and they had the appetizers when I did really well, it was just the bread one that I had the problem with. It came up with this loaf of cut warm pizza bread. It's like, it's the same bread that they make the Picatel. It's the same pizza. It was warm. And they had this cup of, I want to say it was ricotta or burrata. I really think it was ricotta. It could have been burrata. That's totally different cheeses. You're talking about a mozzarella and a ricotta. I should know the difference. I believe it was ricotta though. But it was drizzled with honey and you spread it on the bread. I did all right with the rice balls, the arancini. I did all right with the fried calamar, calamar as we would say, calamari. It's the bread and the ricotta. I had a little bit of a problem with. I did. Oh my gosh, and my lunch was fantastic. I had grilled salmon with mashed potatoes. And I think there was a vegetable in there. I don't recall but it was a vegetable i don't remember what it was the sound was it was perfect i even did all right with the desserts because they had little minis so i had a cake pop and a cannoli which you know in mini form is huge for me it was the bread it was the bread and i know this i do but you know what you are who you are you do what you do I mean, I would have probably had more had I not been watching what I was eating. I probably would have eaten way more. I mean, I think I had three pieces that I remember. Could have been four. I probably would have had eight. I probably would have had the whole board, let's face it. They were skinny, like little, like, I know. Uh, the week, other than that, I pulled it in. Uh, I wasn't as stellar as I could have been, um, but I, it was okay. I did wind up having a gain. It is what it is some weeks. Point six. I wasn't, you know, I, I, she's like, she looks at me like, like they look at you, the guys are like, you know, I'm like, I'm okay. Cause I knew, I knew that it, I could feel it. You, especially when you have a sensitivity to food and that sensitivity makes you feel bloated. So I was going in there feeling bloated. And I will tell you, um, in the last couple of weeks I've noticed, now maybe you can relate to this. I don't know. We have had really bad heat and humidity here in New Jersey. And I doesn't normally bother me. I don't, I'm not usually out in it, let's face it. But it doesn't usually bother me. But I noticed that my rings, and I've had these on a, not long, but I've noticed I'm getting, you can even see, I have a ring mark already. I've only had these on five minutes. I am, it's like, I guess I'm getting at an age where all of a sudden the fluid's getting to me. So I definitely could feel it. And I'm like, I've never been like that. I would take my green tea flush and I would be, and I've noticed the flush isn't flushing as, as well as it used to. It's interesting, but you know what? It is what it is. We move on. Let's get to the weekly meeting topic. How to build meals that keep you strong and energized. I like this topic because they're showing you how to build a meal, which is important because you can give me 
this, this, and that, but how do I put it all together? And this is how we're going to build the meal. Lifting weights isn't the only way to focus on strength. What you eat plays a role too. Map out your meals ahead of time to make the right mix of nutrients. Eating is so important. Like Timmy went to the doctors and he was talking about it was diet and this and that. And he said, I you know I work out. He goes, sometimes working out isn't enough. You have to put the right food in your body. Light bulb. It, it's true. You can't out exercise your fork. You can't. Try this. Step one, outline your day or week of eating. Decide when and where you'll eat and how many points you'll use. Yeah, you definitely, if you know you're going to be out somewhere, you definitely should definitely plan ahead and figure out what your point budget is. Step two, start with a base, start with a protein base. For each meal, choose a zero point or low point food. A lot of our proteins are, are meats. They're, well, I should say meats. Well, they're, well, they're chicken is a meat, I guess. Chicken, tur low fat breast, chicken, turkey, fish, all fish all fish, which blows my mind that salmon is zero points, but it is. Um, so you have this base protein. Now, steak is never a bad option. Honestly, a nice lean filet. Yes, it's points, but it's not a hugely bad option. I When I go to a steak place, I get steak. I'm not going to get grilled chicken because I'm at like Outback. I'm going to get steak, a nice lean steak, and it's so good. It is you know, because you're not having it every day. Heck, I, I can't remember the last time we were out at back. It was not too long ago. And I, no, we weren't, we were at Texas Roadhouse. It was about, I would say a month and a half ago. Oh my gosh, I had a steak. It was fantastic. Baked potato, veg. Can't go wrong. The bread, again, killed me there too. The bread always gets me. So yeah, definitely always start your meal with a zero point protein. A zero point protein or a low point protein like pork pork tenderloin and loins are the th most unfattiest pork unfattiest. <laughs> most leanest pork now you're talking about like butt or a rump or um, a shoulder they're more fatty the ones you make the pulled pork with they're the fattier cuts of pork so there's points are a little bit higher but i'm gonna be honest with you even that I don't get crazy about it. Yes, we have full pork. It's Tibby's favorite. We had a first birthday last week. Did I have some? I sure did. I measured my portion and I enjoyed it. But would I prefer a loin? Not when I'm having pulled pork. If I want pulled pork, you gotta have a butter or shoulder. It's just, you can try making it with a loin. It's not as good. And here's the thing. If you're not gonna enjoy it, it's kind of like, yeah, well, I did the lighter cut of pork. Just have less and enjoy it. So start with a protein base, chicken or turkey breast, pork tenderloin, non-fat Greek yogurt, salmon or other oily fish. <laughs> salmon or other oily fish. Like why not flounder? Why do they tell you to do an oily fish? Shrimp? I don't know. I find salmon to be very, I mean, when you cook a piece of salmon, you see the oil on the plate. I do feel like that is something I feel like I need to give a, a point or two to. Chicken or turkey breast, 24 grams of protein in the serving. This should tell you how much it is though. Because it's not 24 grams for a piece of chicken, you gotta watch the amount of chicken. Okay, sorry, WW. <laughs> Pork tenderloin, only two points for three ounces. It's a decent amount. Uh, non fat Greek is also high in calcium and it is high in protein. Salmon or other oily fish has vitamin D and helps you with calcium absorption. Also, cottage cheese is really high in protein as well. So if you're thinking of a breakfast, try subbing out cottage cheese for the yogurt. I know some people don't like the texture. You could whip it. You could, da is it Daisy? No, Friendship has a whipped 1% that I get at some stores. It doesn't, it's hard to find, but it is fantastic. And I sub out cottage cheese for my two ingredient dough and I make fantastic, it's so good. And it gives you that little cheesiness in there. Oh, it's so good. Step three, add a fruit, vegetable, and or grain. Did you hear that? And, didn't say or, but grain. Grains are important. They are. I don't, people are like, oh, I don't, I don't eat grains. I don't eat breads. I don't eat, I don't, you know, I don't eat that. You shouldn't eat as much, yes, but you should have it in there. It's gonna keep you full. If you're looking for food, eight o'clock at night, 
what did you have for dinner? And I ask that to most people when they tell me, oh, it's the nighttime eating, Denise, that gets me. So I always say, well, what would you have for dinner? Well, I had, you know, some chicken and turkey and I had some broccoli and some carrots and a salad. That's great, but where's your grain? Where's something that's gonna stick to your ribs? You need to have a little bit of something. Try to work in produce that delivers extra calcium like kale and broccoli. <sighs> I love kale and broccoli. I have been into kale salads. You massage the kale. I think I did a video where I massage the kale. I think I did. Because I feel like I've shown that because it's so important. It helps. And it's just, and you must chop it small. If you're eating, you've got big leaves of kale, it's you feel like a cow. But no, chop up your kale or buy it. You could buy it pre-chopped at the store. And it's washed and everything. I would still massage it though. But broccoli, oh my gosh, broccoli. Cauliflower. I love, you know, roasting them. Brussels sprouts. It's so much different when you roast a vegetable versus just boiling it, steaming it, sauteing it. It just brings out and keep it till you still have that crunch. I will tell you, you will eat more when you do something that's tasty. If you're steaming it and it's this mush, I won't want to eat that either. You want it to keep its integrity. That's my favorite word, integrity. Step four, finalize your plan. Think about what sauces or dressings you'll use and how you'll prepare your meal. It's great to have all those grilled options, but you do have points left for some kind of dipping sauce or something to throw over your fish. Now, not all sauces have to be pointed. You can make a beautiful sauce that has no points. You know, if you're yogurt, you can make so many delicious yogurt-based sauces if yogurt is your zero-point food. Even if for me, if I have, since I have to count it, sometimes it's a little bit of yogurt, like a tablespoon is, is pretty much nothing. So yeah, definitely use like fresh fruits, make great sauces, oh my gosh. You can make a compote, put it over the turkey or the chicken, just, just boiling some blueberries, boiling some strawberries, make a fruit compote, put it over your, your poultry. And if it's a zero point food for you, it's such a good, and you're not using that much and you're cooking it down and it concentrates the flavor and it's fantastic. You don't need to add any sugar to it. Fruit has its own, you don't need to add anything to it. Let's dive deeper. Not one not so fun fact about weight loss along with fat most people lose some lean muscle mass everything in your body that isn't fat including muscle or bone it's normal but losing too much could increase risk of injury sap energy and slow metabolism over time that's where protein calcium and vitamin d come into three come into all three help protect lean mass and I would lay the venture, everybody that I know is on vitamin D supplements. It seems like that's the thing that every time you go get your blow oh, you're low on vitamin D. Well, we get vitamin D from the sun. If you're not out in the sun, you're probably not getting enough. So definitely check with your doctor. Um, there's nothing wrong with increasing your, especially when as women, we get older. Calcium is important. Vitamin D is important. And protein is important. But let's remember to keep them in a doable level to have lofty protein goals that you cannot sustain without supplements is something you might not want to tr want to really establish honestly i do take my supplements i don't take them every day because i know for me that i'm not purchasing boxes of bars i'm not purchasing cases of protein i'm not purchasing canisters of fruit i'm not going to regularly do that do i purchase them i sure do but i don't purchase them every month I let them last and I take them intermittently throughout the week. Protein research shows higher protein intake helps preserve muscle and promote more fat loss on a weight loss journey. Protein also contributes to bone health, but also too much protein can hinder things for certain people with health issues. Like a lot of my subscribers are older, so I would never tell them, oh my gosh, have 150 grams of protein. That's what you need to do because it's not always good for older people because of certain risks. That is why I always tell you to check with your physician before you do anything that's crazy, like having going from 40 grams of protein to 150. You have to make sure that everything is functioning properly because in theory, everything works, but doesn't work for everybody. And we're all different, our bodies are different. And just for you know health and wellness, I always say check with your doctor before doing anything that is crazy. 
but there's no, nothing wrong with increasing your protein. I try to have between 80 grams and 100. Why? Because that's doable for me. And I try to do it mostly with food. And I do occasionally, like this morning I'm having my overnight oats. So in there is going to be some premier protein. There's gonna be yogurt in there. So there's gonna be things that in there that are going to help me reach my protein goal. So like differently, like, like and I'm telling you, I've been just make, getting some ground turkey, making patties. Like a, I don't wanna call them a burger cause they're really not just a turkey patty. And having that on top of a, with my salad you know, like, yeah, I have a, usually have a salad over lunch once a while, but throwing that lean turkey in there, throwing a scoop of cooked quinoa in your salad along with that amps up your protein and it's food. Tuna, tuna has a ridiculous amount of protein per can. And I don't think there's something wrong with having a can of tuna. You could, I think there's close to 24 grams of protein per can of tuna. I can eat a can of tuna, but I don't want to eat that every day because if you do that, then you're going to get sick and tired of the same food. I don't really want the tuna. I just don't feel like it. You don't because you're, so that's why it's good to change up to the proteins like the yogurts and the turkey. Tofu. I know if you don't like, like tofu, tofu and tempeh have a lot of protein. Um, it's the way you cook it. Now I love to get the firm tofu, wrap it in cheesecloth and weight it and drain it even as much as I can then chopping it, marinating it in soy, ginger and garlic and it's fantastic and you air fry it. My Peter, I can't keep his hands out of it. And that's my picky eater, but air fried to I mean, and you're just eating, it is a snack, it's zero points, tons of protein, it's just delicious. It's finding something, how can I make that protein taste good? Like same thing with yogurt, I don't like, I don't like yogurt, I can't eat it. Well, number one, try making your own. I will tell you that homemade yogurt is so much better than store-bought yogurt. It doesn't have that sourness. And you can make it in your instant. If you have an instant pot, it has a yogurt setting. You should be making your own. It is simple. I have a video on how easy it is to make. You have to do use the Fairlife yogurt, the method that I use. You could there's a harder method, but I'll be honest with you, if it's that many steps, you're not going to do it. This cold start method: drop, pour, you no know, drop, swish, put it on, eight hours incubate, you drain it, and the draining it does it on its own. I line my sieve with cheesecloth or a paper towel, put my yogurt base in there. It drains for probably an hour, hour and a half, and it's like cottage cheese. It's so thick and delicious. But if you don't want to make your own and you buy Faye, it's probably one of the best ones. Faye, Chobani, the two big names are probably the best tasting. Mix it with something. Don't eat it plain. Use a skinny syrup. You could use pro uh, powder, peanut butter. You could use protein powder in your, you could use cocoa powder. So you might need a little bit of sweetener with that one. But it, the protein powder, even the pudding mix, sugar-free pudding mix, you could do that. Make a dip. I mean, you can make a dip with anything. But if you use the protein powder, it thickens it and it becomes like a pudding. And you can top it with some fruit and some nuts and some berries and some seeds. You have a high protein program bowl that is fantastic. You will never be like, you will be eating yogurt. Cottage cheese. Try the same thing with cottage cheese. Now, I did a video on how to whip cottage cheese if you don't like the curds. Some people think, oh, it's a texture thing. And I get that. People are texture sensitive. Whip it. It becomes like ricotta. It's amazing. And you will be like, and you can add the same things to the yogurt, to the cottage that you added to the yogurt. The protein, the powder peanut butter, the cocoa powder, the skinny syrup, the pudding mix. And it'll thicken it. And it's so good. You can put it in with flour. Make a bun. Oh my gosh. I can go on and on. Calcium and vitamin D. On its own, calcium is known for maintaining and fortifying bones. But it works even harder when paired with vitamin D, which helps the body better absorb and hold on to calcium. Foods like sardines, milk, cheese, certain cereals contain both. So definitely as we age, your doctor has probably already told you calcium i'm sure I'm, i would venture to say everybody watching this video is if not is either has or been told well not everybody but mostly everybody has is probably on a vitamin d supplement it's just it's, it's everybody is and it's funny when i went i hadn't been on one and when i went i think two years ago it's like your vitamin d, i'm like i was waiting for that because everybody knows on a vitamin d does this mean you can forget all about other nutrients or that you need to stock up on protein shakes and supplements? Of course not. 
Just be mindful to incorporate the above trio into your meals. Meat and dairy aren't the only foods that can make it happen. Others like tofu, tofu, lentils, grains, and some produce also contain protein, calcium, and vitamin D. I will link my video in the eye card. It's usually over here. Um, I did a whole video on things that are high in protein. I will link that here. So if you're interested in looking at food instead of supplements, which honestly I would recommend, I think it's something you could maintain. Supplements get expensive. A lot of us are on a fixed income. A lot of us have other expenses and to sit there and spend $30 on drinks and $50 on powder and $30 on bars, that's a lot of money every month. It's not in everybody's budget and I totally understand that. But I will link all the protein sources from food. You might be surprised that have, you'd be like, I never thought they had. We just don't know because we just don't eat those foods. Or we don't, we're not really thinking protein when we're eating but you'd be surprised how many things have protein and that will link that video. So that is it. I like that they're talking about different nutrients. Maybe someday we'll be tracking macros on this plan, or at least have the ability to, if you choose to have, to see your macro count at the end of the day. I don't think that's ever a bad idea, Weight Watchers. I think you really should consider having a tally for people that want it. I would lay money. If you did that, you would have a huge influx of people. Agree. In the comments if you think i'm right if they added macro they it's there i mean when you put your food in if you scroll down it's there it's just not totaled for you and i think people want and what you pay for the app and the app can do it because other apps do it so they have the capabilities to put that in there they just choose not to so i think a lot of people show of hands that would want that in there because sometimes you just want to know at the end of the day what your your nutrient you know total is Yes, you could put it on a pad and paper. You could. But why should you when you're paying X amount of dollars for an app that tracks everything else and it is there. It just needs a total for you. But yeah. But definitely something you should definitely increase in your day-to-day -day is protein. There's, like I said, I try between 80 and 100 grams. It's something I could continue. If I had a huge lofty goal, it would be I would be taking supplements, number one. Number two... I would probably eat way more, which I don't know if I can even afford to do that. But it just it's just something I cannot sustain. And it's not about losing, it's about sustaining and maintaining. Because that's the goal. The goal isn't weight loss, honestly. It's sustain and maintain. Because we all could lose it. We've all proven we could lose it. But we've we have to maintain it. Not maintaining right now, but I'm sure a lot of you would agree with me on that. We've done it. We've all lost in every Weight Watchers plan. But have we maintained and sustained? We have to make small, doable, sustainable longevity changes. So we can do that. So that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this topic. I think it's a really good one. I think building a meal is super important. And starting with a zero point protein is the way to go. You can do that for every, every meal. Breakfast, you could do yogurt. You could do eggs. Two zero point proteins right there. Lunch, you can do tuna. You can do chicken or turkey and some of the lunch meats out there. And I know people want the nitrates and all that stuff. Some of them you can get very lean lunch meat for zero points. Okay. Dinner. You can do chicken, turkey, fish, lean pork roast. You know, you have points. If you're sitting there leaving points on the at the, at the end of the day and you like pork, you're choosing not to eat it. I eat pork, we eat pork all the time. In fact, I have a pork loin in the freezer. It's easy to make, it's good, we love it, so. It's the other white meat. You know, here's the thing, you're on a lifestyle, and in a lifestyle you eat everything, we just eat less of it. So, and steak, oh, steak. All right, that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section below how you did this week. What do you think of the WW topic? If you are new here, welcome. If you've not yet hit that subscribe button, join us here at Dish with D, where we are dishing WW the good, the bad, and the ugly. So if that is something that you need, want, hit that subscribe button. You know anybody that could, that's on WW or can benefit from this content, please share this video. There's a share button right there. Share it on Facebook, at your Weight Watchers meeting, at your Zooms. If you're on Weight Watchers Zoom, say, hey, this girl D, she makes fantastic hummus. And you know, you really should check it out. She, what she does is kind of cheese. Her buns are banging. <laughs> My buns are banging. Them cottage buns are where it's at. I'm telling you, that is decadence and it's cottage cheese. You're still going, 
it's good it's cottage cheese and i think you could you would enjoy it so that is it for me i will dish with you another day have a great rest of your day start to the week and let's get this week done let me know your favorite protein